let's start out. We talked so much about the quarterbacks on yep. Sunday. Do you kind of have a timeline of when you think you'll be named starting quarterback? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll be coming up here pretty soon because uh, after this weekend, what it would be about two weeks out from um, our first game against Tennessee, and we have a scrimmage tomorrow. It just gives another live eval of both uh, Tony and uh, Anthony, and then go from there. What have you kind of seen between the two of them? Yeah, you know, they both have been really good, honestly. Um, Tony has been very consistent and efficient in throwing the football, commanding things. Calandra's gotten better each week, uh, each practice, rather, uh, with that. You can see his growth from the spring um, through the summer. And uh, it's been fun to see because it gives you a look, some comfort knowing that you have two quality guys. You know, obviously, Tony had, I mean, uh, Anthony had played in college football, but he, he's wired the right way. He's a competitive guy. You know, he, he's got a little chip about him, a little undersized guy. So he's always in here competing and wanting to know how can he get better. Yeah. You talked about having a scrimmage tomorrow. Yes. What did you see from the last scrimmage that you yeah. want to change for this time? You know, just continued growth, you know, and that's been a big focus of ours is having a growth mindset every day, want to know, you know, stacking our days, all the cliches, right? But in all seriousness, we just want to continue to see improvement. And that's all position groups. Um, and guys played well this past scrimmage. And it's been, that was a culmination of kind of the first couple of practices. You know, we had another physical uh, a week here of grinding them out pretty good, and they responded. So let's, let's capitalize on that on Friday. You know, and there's some guys that uh, are going to have some more opportunities. I mean, some guys that weren't able to participate as much in the last scrimmage due to, you know, training camp bumps and bruises that will be available for us on Friday. Des, how do you feel about the depth that you're developing at receiver? Yeah. How, how deep do you want to go there? Yeah. How deep do you feel like you are right now? You know, Obviously, I like where we are with uh, Malik and Malachi, and Demik Stallings had a tremendous camp thus far. Uh, J.R. Wilson, you know, uh, Ethan Davis, Darren Harrison, Jaden Gibson. So right there, that gives us seven. You know, if we can get the eight guys, uh, an add another one to that mix, I think that'd be good for us because we know those guys are gonna play special teams as well. And you know, football is a physical game, and somebody's gonna get nicked up. So to be at least have you know six to eight guys that we can rely on. We saw JR come on yeah. uh, last season, yeah. Jaden in the spring. What was the next step for them, and what was the yeah. kind of off-season assignment? They both uh, meant physically have continued to develop, especially for Jaden coming out of high school. He's added some good weight to himself. And even JR, his body's changed. He's a little bit more defined, and his conditioning is better out of practice. He's got better stamina. you know. So now that allows him to play, play longer, harder, and stronger for a longer time um, with the tempo we want to play with. So both those guys have seen a lot of growth and um, really consistency in making plays for us, too. Where are they at with their, their route running, how sharp yep. that is? No, it's, it's been sharp. Again, we, we put a lot of work into it, whether it's one-on-ones, RVAs, pass scale. We've got a lot of reps of pass scale. So repetition, those guys have maximized from it. Yeah. What have you seen from Ahmad? Yeah. Yeah. So you see Ahmad every day just get a little bit more confident, you know, just because, you know, the ACL, right, and not having done football for a while. And he's a big physical guy. Um, he's shown that in some in some contact situations of being a play behind his pads and playing physical, but he's playing faster because I think he's getting, becoming more confident in his leg. Yeah. Can he help you guys this year? He, he can. You know, that's another deep room. Yeah. And um, those guys get hit every play, you know. So everybody in that room is going to be, you know, expected to help us at some point this year. Yeah. Did you expect Sedarian to emerge the way he has or was he been kind of a surprise? You know, yes and no, just because of knowing – who he is, you know, he's a three-sport athlete, very self-confident young man, just very natural with the football. You know, he played quarterback. He was a starting point guard. You know, he's a center field and a shortstop. And those positions, like, require a lot of bit of moxie about themselves. So, and he's a smart kid that's learned our system and be able to allow himself to just go out naturally and play and make plays, and he's done that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, number wise, like I, we would love to have ten guys, right? But that that may or may not happen. But what has happened is for a young man like Uganda, who came in in the spring and played exclusively in, interior as a guard, he was able to bump out the tackle, and you know what? He's pretty. He's done a good job out of the tackle. So that gives us some flexibility at the tackle spot. You know, Blake Steen, you know, first year kid, redefined his body made a commitment to just changing his body, nutrition, conditioning, and now he's been getting reps at tackle because he was an interior guy too that got moved out to tackle. 
he's excelled out there. So what it does allow us to know, okay, we've, we're building some depth at tackle, but we also know we got guys that can play inside. And, you know, there's probably only one or two guys that probably could play, or one position guys, right? I mean, Bowley is a tackle guy, and then Ty Furness is a center. The rest of them have to play multiple positions. And we've been, we benefited this camp of seeing those guys in those roles in situational football, and they've, they've excelled in, in doing it. So we just got to continue to build that to feel like we're going to the first game, if, you know, I don't know the numbers, but at least have eight, you know, ideally 10 guys that we feel confident about to go out there and win with. Yeah. Have you done anything on Tennessee yet? Or is that yeah, you know, we did a bunch in the summer. And then uh, once we culminate with, with fall camp next week, we'll review that and kind of see where we are, right? Because we've changed some from the spring. There's some things we probably didn't spring that we're not very good at now or vice versa because the team has changed, you know, with some of the new additions and fi figuring out who our identity is, which we feel like we have a pretty good feel about that. And then how can we go attack you know, Tennessee to win the game. Yep. With this being year two for you guys, does it feel like how much have, more have you been able to accomplish in yeah. camp because yeah. guys are up to yeah. speed on that? You know, a lot. And some of it is the bodies, right? Because we've had, we've had 126 guys in camp. So you're able to take some of the pounding off some of the guys, whereas previously you have 110 guys. And so, we, you know, our rotations, instead of being, you know, 4-4-2, four, four, we've been 4-4-4. Four, 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 you know, so the young guys can get some work so we can evaluate them. And then over time, the older guys, you know, that recovery time between a set of 10 plays as opposed to a set of 12 plays adds up over a camp. It seems very minimal, but you're going, you know, you got a six play rest as opposed to now you got an eight play rest to kind of recover in between a set. So all that's been good. And then the meeting time that we've had with the guys, whether it's walkthroughs, mobile classrooms, what we call it, where, you know, everything, everybody doesn't learn the same. You know, some kids are more visual, digital. Some kids have to do it, you know, in the setting. I can't focus long either. These kids can't focus. So to sit in a position meeting for 50 minutes, let's get them up and walk and talk and teach and just find different ways to get the point across so they can learn it. And they've, they've done that and been able to transition it to the football field. With the offensive identity that, that you guys have talked about, you yeah. know, running the ball first, play yeah. action passing, yeah. um, tight end, what kind mm -hmm. of a role and how important yeah. can those guys be? I'm extremely ecstatic that uh, Mish and Sackett, you know, came back because they obviously had an option that they could have just graduated and been done with college football. And they brought a lot of leadership and experience. And they've, those two guys too, and it seemed like a, a common theme, but especially Sackett, even Mish, Mish has uh, changed his body. He's dropped, I think he's around 240, but last year he was playing at 250. He's moving better. He's healthier. You know, Sackett's redefined his body so those guys can play with more stamina longer and, and bring an added dimension to us with some two tight end stuff. Yeah. Delaney Crawford switched over. Yes. What do you like about what he could maybe bring a receiver and how yeah. fast can you get him up to speed? You know, his his learning curve obviously has to change from being a quarterback to a receiver. But athletically, you know, he's a six two kid, hundred and ninety pounds and he can run. You know, now he's got to get more comfortable, you know, catching the football, some of those things. But I mean I, I believe we can get him up to speed if if need it be. And uh, he wants it. That's the key thing. He wants it. It was his decision to do it, so then he'll work at it. Yeah. Where's Muskie throwing the most throughout the training camp? What, excuse me? Where's Tony Muskie where, where, throwing the most? Throwing the most? The most? Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he was completing the ball at a good, good clip in the spring, but not the ball's getting out faster, right? Uh, and we see a, a lot of looks in practice. You know, Coach Rudd does a great job with what they do schematically, coverage-wise, front-wise. So, you know, we may have this one play that we've rep 40 times in camp. I, I'm betting to say he's probably seen the same coverage maybe twice, you know? So if him getting that mental reps and the, 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 the speed of that and knowing where to attack, get the ball to, whether it's man or zone coverage, I think that's been a big growth for him compared to the spring. You mentioned the running back yeah. the depth there. Who have you seen kind of stand out in that group? Yeah, um, I mean, Paris is Paris, man. The dude is freaking rock solid, right? Love the guy. Mike Hollis had a great camp. You know, uh, uh, you talked about uh, Ahmad Foster. He's a guy that's flash, right? He's getting his opportunity in there. Um, Jack Greasy, you know. To be honest with you, any of those guys that have been put in there, Coach Gates has done a good job of rotating them, trying to keep them fresh, but also keeping it competitive. They've all taken their opportunities and maximized it to where we have a lot of confidence in that room uh, regardless of who's in the game. Yeah. A lot of this comes down to putting points on the scoreboard. 
Yeah. Bottom line, right? right? So Bottom line. How is that execution gone? When yeah. you get close enough, yeah. are you executing better than yes. maybe you were before? Yeah, we, we do feel like we are. Um, and it's showing up in practices where, you know, there's been a lot more success in practice you know, uh, relative to the past. And we know the, the main objective is, is to outscore our opponent. And that's got to be offensive football, right? We have to outscore our opponent. And our kids have done a good job, one, taking care of the football in practice, eliminating the turnovers in practice, so that should carry over to the game. Two, executing and playing fast, right? So we're getting lined up, we're getting the play calls, we're executing, our MAs have decreased, right? We're catching the ball better. So all those things that add up to having an opportunity to score points, dominating your opponent, you know? And I think that's another thing we talked about. First, hey, let's, let's win the day, win the day, all right? We get consistent with winning the day, let's dominate the day so that we can dominate our opponent on Saturday. So it's just changing our mindset from being average to trying to be elite. Because we do want to be, we want to be an elite offense in college football. And we, we believe we can do that and score points. Yes.